This week on Maker Update, a social distance dress, cracking the code, mini mini golf, popping prairie dogs, latching broom holders, cutting foam, and sculpting tricks. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're out there doing the best you can with everything that's going on. Uh, if you're here, it's probably because you want a little creative distraction and I am here to provide that for you. There are a lot of cool projects to catch you up on, so let's get started with the project of the week. Last week, Anouk Whipwreck showed off two new versions of her proximity dress. Just like her famous spider dress and her smoke dress, these are interactive designs that respond to the space around them. For the latest creations, Anouk has a dress that can be worn two ways. One version uses a necklace with what looks like an ultrasonic rangefinder inside. If it detects someone nearby, servos are activated in her skirt, attached to plastic arms that fan out to create more personal space. For her other variation, the necklace has an infrared camera inside that displays a heat map out to an external display or a connected smartphone on her arm. What I love about both of these designs is how the interaction design part of it is relatively simple and approachable for beginners, but the style and execution are cranked up to 11. Things don't have to be complicated to be awesome, and if we really want to create something memorable, we have to think about what it looks like and how people react to it. I'm dealing with this dilemma personally right now, having worked on a machine for months that's functional now, but looks like garbage. And I know for certain that it's more complicated than it needs to be. It's humbling and I'm so glad for makers like Anouk who remind us that we can all aspire to make beautiful things. It's time now for some news. Arduino has announced the Touch Less Do More Challenge. It's a contest to see what kinds of solutions we can come up with for adapting experiences to be touch-free or social distance compliant. As you might imagine, Arduino would prefer that you come up with solutions that use one of their boards. If you pitch them a good idea by June 16th, you have a chance to win a free MKR Wi-Fi 1010 board for use in your project. Final projects need to be submitted by July 14th for a chance to win up to $10,000 worth of prizes, though none of them are really cash in hand. Coincidentally, Instructables is running an Arduino project contest that ends on June 22nd with multiple Amazon gift card prizes. The grand prize is a $500 gift card. As far as I can tell, there's really no reason not to submit your Arduino project to both contests and see if one bites. Now for more projects, Crack the Code by Michael Clements is an Arduino-based project that is very much hands-on. It's a beautifully laser-cut safe that uses a servo as a latch. Once it's closed, the safe randomly generates a secret passcode that you have to guess using the rotary encoder on the front. Fortunately, any number you correctly guess will be indicated with a green LED, so if you can keep track of the numbers you get right, you can eventually open the safe. It's a fun idea and I expect it would make a great gift for someone who likes puzzles. On the Prusa printer site, a user named DNA uploaded two mechanical 3D printed mini golf games, though maybe since there's already a mini golf, this is like micro golf. These both print with no support and no extra hardware required. The magic piece here is a 3D printed spiral spring, like a clock spring, that stores the tension as you pull back. As someone who loves actual mini golf, I think these are just begging to get remixed into more silly and challenging designs. Jason Alleman from JK Brickworks created this outstanding prairie dog automata in collaboration with his partner Crystal. Though the seven minute video doesn't technically have any narration, if you turn on the closed captioning, you actually get a description of what Jason is doing in each step to create the motion for each of the four prairie dogs. A single motor is driving all of the motion, which is incredible considering how different each of the prairie dogs behaves. The secret is in the gearing, but you'll need to watch the video to figure out how he's doing it. Now for some tips and tools. This 3D printed latching broom holder designed by Greg Frost was the highlight of my weekend. I printed three of them in different sizes to accommodate different handle sizes of my brooms and mops and install them in my garage. Not only do they keep brooms up and out of the way, but they're so satisfying to latch in and out. He also has one size down for holding a pen or pencil, which is kind of silly, but really fun. On the Cool Tools blog, Sean Michael Reagan talks about why he prefers the wall-mounted version of the thread checker. It's a little pricier than the version you get on a wire, but you can use it one-handed, you can get a few more size options, and just like my brooms, having it on the wall keeps it up and out of the way. On Tested, Adam Savage shows off a rotary tool engraver bit that can cut through glass, and he tells a great story about what he had to do to cut glass before he discovered this option. 
On the Prusa printer site, Oddworks uploaded this Gandalf the White staff topper. I'm thinking of adding this to the tops of all of my brooms now that they're magically suspended in my garage. On the Make channel, Caleb Craft unboxes and reviews the Polyshaper Orange CNC Foam Cutter. This is a CNC hot wire cutter priced just under $400. This is one of those product categories along with Vacu4 machines that's yet to have its Glowforge moment. I don't think this is that moment, but it's a neat reminder of what this tool can do. The Craftsman has a new video up with four tricks for sculpting things with Sculpey clay. I don't wanna give any of them away, but let me just say that as someone who hasn't played with clay since I was a kid, this video made me wanna order some immediately. Also, I have to give a shout out to the Craftsman's Crafters of the Universe Facebook group. It's only two months old, but it's already one of the most inspiring maker groups I've ever joined on Facebook. You can find a link to it in the description. And finally, with each new month, you get a new episode of the Adafruit edition of Maker Update, hosted by Tyler Weingartner. This week's show included the awesome robot xylophone project by Liz Clark. If you missed it, go check it out. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, they've got a great blog post up on Maker.io on the different options for getting your Arduino board online. Whether that's starting with a Wi-Fi enabled board or adding a Wi-Fi adapter or an ethernet connection, this guide will run you through some options to consider, including some cellular options from Adafruit. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, I love reading those comments. You can get on the Maker Update email list to get everything automatically emailed out to you every week so you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and of course, to the excellent DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.